bureaus are concerned with figures. With their special accounting machines, they look after the figures of the Treasury Department. Keeping the nation's accounts is the country's biggest bookkeeping job. But by punching holes in cards, they make short work of it. This is what a card looks like before it's used. Then it's put into the punching machine. For every check issued, for instance, a separate card is punched. With speed and skill, the girl taps out the figures on the keyboard. The punching is done automatically as the card passes through the machine. The great advantage of this system is that once all the information is recorded on the card, other machines do all the routine job of bookkeeping. For these girls, there's no adding, subtracting or writing up of ledgers. After it has been punched, the card looks like a pianola roll and is later used in a similar way. To make sure there are no mistakes, the cards are checked in the verifier. If the card has been accurately punched, it will pass through the verifier without any trouble. This is the sorter. It sorts cards by their perforations. Every card punched in the same place drops into the same compartment. And when it comes to sorting out the population of New Zealand, this is the machine the census department uses. It sorts out people according to age groups, wage groups, or anything else necessary. Then the sorted cards are put in the tabulator to record the results. This machine senses the holes in the cards, adds up the total, and prints the result all in one operation. These mechanical aids cut out much of the routine work in modern government departments, but in the long run, it all depends on the girls who look after the figures. In Wellington, traffic inspectors from all over New Zealand have been brought together for an extensive refresher school. With petrol restrictions lifted, these inspectors will soon find business booming. Men with many years' experience and new inspectors just out of the services find there's a lot to learn. At the psychological branch of the DSIR, the men are given tests that measure vision and reaction ability. This instrument tests their ability to look the other way and still see what you are doing. And this device tests reaction to signals and signs that appear on the artificial road moving before the operator. Out on the road, the inspectors have to go through a test of driving skill. In backing through a set of obstacles, marks are given for handling ability as well as speed. Following the driving exercises, the school advances to the hut road for speed and recognition tests. That car was hitting 40. In charge of the school are Chief Inspectors Ainsworth, Watson and Semple. Wellington motorists travelling north are somewhat shaken at this point, but it's all in a good cause. The inspectors have to note all the details of cars that pass. Then to a trial court, where each inspector takes his turn in conducting a case on strictly legal lines. Chief Inspector Ainsworth is the counsel for the defence, and he tries to upset the prosecution. The accused was hugging the wrong curve, Your Worship. Wish I had him on my side last week. Afterwards, a well-known solicitor gives them some hints and advice. At the end of the course, the inspectors are addressed by the Minister of Transport, Mr O'Brien. Their job will be, he says, to protect the unwary and keep the roads safe. Soon they'll be back on the job. Motorists and pedestrians recognise their valuable service and welcome their helping hand. On board the Ruahine at Wellington, Lieutenant General Sir Bernard Freiburg and Lady Freiburg prepare to disembark to begin a day of ceremonies that welcome home New Zealand's most distinguished soldier. And he returns as New Zealand's Governor General. Administrator Sir Michael Myers and the Prime Minister Mr. Fraser are here to meet him. From the services, he receives a salute in his honour. Although 
Though born in Britain, Sir Bernard was reared and educated here in New Zealand. To us, he would always be a New Zealander. From the wharf, Sir Bernard went first to the war memorial to pay a tribute by laying a laurel wreath at the shrine. He meets officials of the NZRSA, many of them old comrades in arms. Following an informal reception at the town hall, Sir Bernard and Lady Freiburg drove to Government House. At the gates, they're greeted by children from St Mark's Anglican School. The drive to the house is lined by boys from Sir Bernard's old school, Wellington College. At midday, the official party returned to Parliament buildings for the swearing-in ceremony. Again, Sir Bernard receives a royal salute and inspects a guard from the three services. of the Commission of Appointment, Sir Bernard takes the Oath of Allegiance and Oath of Office. The proclamation is signed and Lieutenant General Sir Bernard Freiburg becomes the first New Zealander to hold the office of Governor General. On behalf of the people of New Zealand, the Prime Minister welcomes General and Lady Freiburg. Said Mr Fraser, there could be no better choice for the high and responsible position of Governor General. In reply, His Excellency said, of the men and women who had fought under his command, that they had lived up to the great traditions of Anzac. Of his return, he said, that while this was a farewell to arms, it was not a farewell to work. To the honor paid by us to the high office of Governor General, we add today that which we owe to a distinguished New Zealander.